Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Maddles and today I've got game number two of a best of three. It is from the Zotac Cup, I had to think about them then, because I have been casting for a long time today. Ultimately, due to the fact that I've got WCS EU challengers to cast and therefore I'm trying to build up enough stock on my YouTube channel so I get a game out daily. So literally yesterday I cast for 10 hours straight for WCS EU and now I'm tasking most of today in order to get enough videos for my YouTube channel. But yep, beside the point, let's talk about these two players. So down in the bottom left position spawning as the blue Protoss, we've got Gung Fu Banda. And his opponent in the top right, currently playing for CM Storm, the red Terran player, Pult. Game 1 did of course go to Pult, and if you didn't watch it, it was a really fun game on Cloud Kingdom. Game 2 is going to be on Daybreak, which I've got to say, this has got to be some of the best map pool picking ever. Like, going Game 1 Cloud Kingdom, Game 2 Daybreak would be my ideal two maps. If I had to do two maps and I just had to play it out, it would be on these two. Because I love them, I'm a big fan, they're really enjoyable. So it makes me a happy caster to be casting so many games on them. But as we can see, currently Gunfruit just getting down a gateway. Nothing strange there. Pole getting down a barracks and a gas. Same opening as what he did in game one, same opening at the moment from Gunfu. Nothing crazy going on. Pole, he played really effectively in game one and it was all to do with his harassment. He was dropping highly effectively and Gunfu just wasn't able to defend against it enough. It all started with just one Widow Mine drops into the natural base, which called seven probes. From there, Pole was just relentless. He kept dropping in multi prong attacks. Gunfu couldn't move out of his base, had to sit back and defend while Pole took his third. He took a basically worker advantage very quickly and was never in any danger as far as I was concerned. And he just played it very, very nicely. So a 2 0 quite probable here actually. May maybe Gunfu will pull something out of the bag. We'll wait to see. I know Gunfu can have some really effective strategies. He's getting down a cybercore in a bit of a strange position here actually. This is this is pulling quite a long way back and just maybe being a little bit cautious. Maybe he wants to bring a bit of fear into Pold who is sending over that SCV, but the SCV should scan it all out. And there's no reason it's the only reason you're presenting it here is if you were going to try and hide some tech later. Just thinking maybe we'll get something funky going on. We've also got this probe chilling down here. What could we be seeing, guys and girls? Will it be something funky out of Gunfu? Maybe. Maybe it will. But currently this SUV comes in and the SUV is just going to run around and isn't going to spot it. Ooh, okay. So this is straight away quite interesting. Did not see the cybernetics core. The reason that's really important is because suddenly now Pult is not completely comfortable. He doesn't know exactly what his opponent's doing. He's getting down a reactor on his barracks. That's going to help his marine production. A second, a Reaper coming in now. Now he sees it with the Reaper. That's going to be a bit of a sigh of relief actually getting that scout because then suddenly, like, okay, phew, things are okay. Nothing too bonkers going on. The Reaper coming back on up in. And this is just a repeat of game one now. This Reaper going to be very frustrating. Probably not going to get any kills, but we'll soak up some APM and we'll just be a pain because being a pain is fun. As you can see though, behind this pole, taking down his command center, a bunker coming up as well. He's happily getting down an engineering bay very early on, and he's got two SCBs in that gas. The second gas is just getting taken as well now for Gunfu, who is happily getting down Warpgate Tech and his own natural. So neither of these two are going to be going for one base plays, just macroing up quite nicely. Of course, in PvT, you can very happily take your natural expansion fairly quickly. So I don't think this is something to be concerned about or something shocked about. It's very much a standard meta game at the moment. If it was PvP, uh, then maybe I'd be expecting one of them to do some more one base aggression, but everything fine here. And Gunfu really just going for an identical build to game one, getting that robotic facility down. Pult starting that plus one infantry weapons incredibly early. That is a really early plus one coming down. That's going to be finished. Let's work this out now. That's going to be finished by roughly seven minute mark, give or take. Yeah, around seven minutes. So really early plus one timing. This is almost certainly going to be playing in heavily to what he's got planned. He should also get stim out though fairly soon. So he could go for a big timing push. We'll wait to see. But we do see the Stalker on its way forward. The Reaper just going to dance around. We'll get spotted. There is the Sentry back at home. What's the Reaper going to try and do? Will he try and go head on with the Sentry? Will he just try and get a probe kill or two? We'll wait to see. But in it comes up towards the main base. Moving back further. Warp Gate Tech is done. Gets a scout out on everything. Sees the two additional gateways. Sees the Robotics Facility. And also saw the Mothership Core being made because of course the animation is different on the Nexus. Producing a Mothership Core. So now Pult is completely aware of what his opponent is going about doing. He should be quite comfortable. He's got Stim researching. He's got three barracks up. 
this is so standard looking from the Terran player, it is untrue. And likewise though, it is so standard looking from Gumfrew. Neither player breaking out of the mold as of yet, going for anything too crazy. This Reaper obviously hasn't got any kills as of yet. We do have the first Observer hitting the field. This is just going to come and get some information. A second Observer following up as well. Smart choice as well, because if we remember back to game one, Paul did do an awful lot of damage with drops. So getting out a couple more, a couple of extra Observers just means that he hopefully has better map awareness and vision of those drop locations to try and prevent anything from happening. Gumfrey also chucks down a pylon, but the probe was spotted by a marine here. Pult should be able to identify that there should be a pylon down somewhere and go and take it out. Stim is half done, the factory on its way down, plus one infantry weapons already completed at such an early stage. Really a big advantage. The Reaper is going to benefit from that damage increase as well, but good force field will take out that Reaper for the Reaper before it did die saw that the two forges were coming down the pylon getting taken down at the other side of the map and things really looking quite nice now for both players I don't think that either one has too much to worry about obviously when this starport is down the first two medevacs will pop out and that's when we could potentially start seeing some timing pushes but the plus one timing will have been revealed I can assure you because Gumfrey would have clicked on one of Pulse units just to check on the upgrades and we'll see that obviously 1-0 is complete we've got plus one infantry armor coming down two double upgrades are on their way though for Gumfrey and those double upgrades while they're getting chrono boosted should level out the upgrade advantage quite nicely. We see that the Observer is still running around quite nicely. We've got Stim just about to finish the starport there with no add-on yet. Needs to get a switch with the factory. And that is occurring as I say it. Meanwhile, Gumfu taking down the robotics bay. What more is there to say? Just these two being really, really passive for the time being. Not trying to do anything aggressive. Just teching up and getting everything out. I'd expect Pult will start moving across with these first two medevacs though. It's a really common timing push. We saw it in game one. It can be highly effective and deal a lot of damage. The Hallucinated Phoenix is going to come straight over these Marines. Will it get through? Yes, it should do. That means the scout will come down. We'll see everything to be expected. And there's nothing surprising here. Just that there's the single engineering bay. Just confirming it's not double upgrades coming out. Yet, no armory either means the plus two or won't be starting any time in the near future. Gumfu getting some additional gateways down, also getting the Twilight Council. The first Colossus will be in production any second because there's the robotics bay done. And there we go, the first Colossus is getting started too. So this is the time, sort of timing window Poet's going to want to try and exploit. Getting in before that Colossus gets out and specifically before a few Colossi come out. But in comes the single Zella towards the third. Really countering what Poet did in game one, which was go for this push while expanding behind it. Just with the single Zealot, it's really nice. There are a few, few units here. All of them getting Stim, though, to get down here to try and deal with it. So that Stim obviously dealt quite a bit of damage to that infantry. We've also got the third base looking as if Gumfrey wants to move down there, but he's not going to be able to at the moment. There's too much infantry here with the Medivacs there, with the plus 1-1 one, one upgrades nearly done. But 1-1 one, one is completed for Gumfrey, so for a few moments he will have an upgrade advantage. But critically... They will be equal on upgrades for quite a long period of time, and that's important for Gumfu because he's committed a lot to going those double upgrades. Pult also got his engineering base early, but here comes the double drop loading up. Will this catch his opponent off guard? Gumfu doesn't have anything in the main base at the moment. He has no vision around here, so that means this drop should be highly effective, but units are now starting to get pulled back. I don't know what was seen in order to spot that, but Gumfu has got units on their way. A warping coming down as well. Now the Zed is getting taken out very quickly. Concussive Shell is not yet completed. Combat Shield is though. That means this infantry will last quite a long time. The Stalker going down some force fields being utilized here. Big load up and these units are just going to get boosted straight back out of there. The infantry not going to be able to push in towards the third either because there's the Colossus there, the Immortal and a couple of Zealots too. So very, very nice composition. Very good defense there from Gumfrey. Much better than we saw in game one. Two workers killed on each side. A couple more infantry units coming to join this double drop. The pressure most likely to continue from Pold here as he tries to really keep his opponent pinged back just as he did in the first game. The double drop is loaded up once more. Going to go and join the rest of his units in the center. The a Colossus count is a 2, the third one on its way down. Extended Thermal Lance, not started yet though. And that means the Marauders can stay within range. That first Colossus is very low on health. 10 HP remaining but does stay alive and that's the important thing. While it's up it deals damage. Double drop coming down in the main base for Pold here as well. He is trying to type out the Stalkers. Another Photon Overcharge being used. That means there is very little energy left on that Mothership 4. Units getting pulled back. That opens up Pold towards the front. He's 
gonna try and do some damage to that Colossus, but he's unable to get anything dead. The Medivac just gets away. Both of these two players have units that are incredibly lucky in surviving on such low health. But the third base up and running here for Pole. The third only just now taken for Gunfu. That means the Pole's economy is slightly better. He is nine workers behind. Oh no, actually, sorry, Gunfu. Yeah, no, Pole is behind Gunfu in terms of the work count by eleven. But with the three mules doesn't matter too much and there's also another star pool coming down already here for Pult so he's going to switch into quite a lot of viking production now in order to deal with that colossus a couple of zealots getting taken down in terms of resources lost Gunfu has actually lost quite a considerable amount more than that of Pult at this stage of the game which means that he's got to keep that better economy otherwise if he's trading costs ineffectively his army will get smaller and smaller and he'll start getting further and further behind. 2-2 two, two upgrades are now completed for Gunfu. That gives him a solid upgrade advantage. 2-2, two, two, still a good 50 seconds away from completion for Pold in-game. And that just means that these 3-3 three, three upgrades that are already researching here for Gunfu and most likely going to keep getting Chrono boosted will be out so early on, making his army very potent. Sonic Storm just getting researched here. The first High Templar should be hitting the field, and that's when Pold needs to start looking to get his Ghost Academy. He doesn't have it down yet, and that he needs those ghosts for the EMPs on the High Templar. The snipes as well are going to be oh so important going into these later stages. And if he leaves it too long, the storms can really tear him apart. But for the moment, Pold he's got the upgraded, he's got the supply advantage. He's got a good number of Vikings, and he is moving forward for a bit of a push. Six Vikings are down up against three Colossus. We've got the double drop moving in here to the third, but so many Colossus here, and pretty much the entire army gets pulled back. Pold's going to have to pick up quickly, boosts away, but that's allowing him to move up in towards the natural base, and if Gunfu pulls back with all of these units, as he's doing, the drop is just going to turn around and come back in. The Vikings over the high ground, trying to focus down the Colossus as quickly as they can. One Colossus does fall. Good little snipe there, and in comes the drop yet again, just as expected. This is precisely what Pold needs to be doing. Pushing in one area, pulling the army, and then dropping to another and we see these zealots getting absolutely slaughtered by these marauders and that is just such a high damage output the units pushing up through the center again a second colossus nearly going down survive with four hp the good force fields are really good the storm great dealing a lot of damage to this infantry the pole just has so much stuff he's still being successful with this drop at the third it hasn't been cleaned up yet the vikings do manage to take out all but a single colossus this push at the third has done a huge amount of damage absolutely heaps of units have gone down. A lot of workers have also died. The worker count now saying it's 64 to 66. Pole really leveling that out and with the mules does take an advantage. A couple of hellbats in with this composition. The final Colossus does fall. A lot of marines, a lot of marauders. They are trying to break and end this game here and now. Pole with oh, nearly 100 supply advantage over his opponent. He's going for the win and frankly I think he's going to get it. There's the GG and that means the Pole takes the series 2-0. In, and the big thing the pole did so well there was the dropping while attacking at another angle. He really forced his opponent and taxed his opponent's multitasking to the max. So congratulations to pole for that. If you enjoyed the cast in the series, make sure you like the video, leave a cool comment, and of course subscribe. I get new games up every day of the week. So I'll see each and every one of you tomorrow. I'm Maddles. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.